In this video we're going to generate the power function using fixed point numbers. Now we've seen the power function before whenever we used purely integers. So this was a function of the form ax raised to the power of n. So in the integer case, the value for our a and our x could be positive and negative integers. But the value for our n has to be a natural number, so numbers like uh, all the positive numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, it can't have a negative or fractional value. Now the reason for generating this in our fixed point number system is that it's a very useful function that we can then go on and use in, say for example, the Taylor series in order to generate sine functions and cosines. And also after that we can take those functions and we can potentially generate other interesting stuff like uh, the Fourier series. But that's later on in the future. So let's have a look at the two pieces of code we have here. On the right hand side we have the calling function, on the left hand side we have the subroutine as usual. Now in the calling function we're going to have our values for our a, x and n are going to be passed in to our new fixed point uh, mathematical power function. So I've called that fp underscore math underscore power and it sits at this address down here. And you can see here that whenever we've defined this, we've defined it for the value of a and the value of x and in this instance I've used the value 1 for the a but remember it's going to be our fixed point number system so it's going to be 1.0 that we have to use. And for the value for x here I've chosen the value minus 2.25 and again it's f minus 2.25. Now the only thing you have to be careful with here is that the value for the n still remains the same. We're still just using our integer values. So it's only values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So we don't need to use the f term here. We just put simply the number 3. So this here is going to take the number minus 2.25 and raise it to the power of 3. So just multiply it three times. And we're going to jump to the subroutine. It will jump over to the subroutine here and it will run through the subroutine to generate the correct result and it will pass the correct result over to the position in the memory here called result. So that's the calling function. Let's have a look at the actual subroutine. So we've already generated a subroutine for the power function whenever we were using purely integer values. But now we're going to be using the fixed point values. But the code is almost the same. The only difference being is that whenever we multiply numbers together, we can't just use the multiply function. So we can't just say multiply um, one number with the other number because both of these numbers are now fixed point numbers. So we're going to have to use our fixed point multiplica multiplication subroutine. So all I've done here is I've gone into the original uh, integer code for our power function. And whenever I have found the section that we need to use to multiply the numbers together, what we will actually have to do is we'll have to pass the values onto the stack that we want and then we will have to jump to that subroutine which is the uh, multiply power subroutine and then that subroutine will return back the correct answer and of course the correct answer will be in fixed point uh, in, in fixed point uh, mode. So there are two places here within the code that we had to do this. So the first point is down here. So at this point here previously uh, at this point we just had multiply uh, r0 and r2 
But now what we have to do is we have to pass the contents of R0 and R2 into the subroutine for the multiplication of the, of the fixed point numbers. So then we jump to our subroutine here and then when we run through that subroutine it will put the answer into the stack and then we can pop the answer off the stack in this case into register R0. And there's one other place down here where the we have to jump again. So down here we have to push R1 and R0 onto the stack, jump to the subroutine and it will multiply the fixed point numbers together and return with the uh, required value. And then we're going to store that value in result and then we will push result back up to the uh, calling function. So we push the result back up to the position up here. So it's back into the stack and then we pop that value off of the stack into result. And this is the final result here. And also what I've done here is I have maintained the idea of the trap. So we can not have a value for n which is less than zero. If we had a value for n less than zero, then we would be looking at um, generating uh, potentially complex numbers and we're not interested in doing this here. So we finish up here with the trap, but I've changed the trap so that it's now trap number seven. So trap number seven will, will occur whenever you try to put a minus value in for the index whenever you are using a fixed point power function. So if you're unsure of some of this, the code here, then what you can do is you can actually open up the math underscore power uh, subroutine and have a look at it and then compare it to the subroutine we've got here. And you'll see it's only changed in those couple of places. So let's go ahead and we will see this working on our machine. Now, just before we get started, I have decided to change one of the numbers here, just so we could see the power function working completely. So we're going to have the value of A, which is 2.5, the value of X, which is minus 2.25, and the value of N, which is three. So we're going to have minus 2.25 raised to the power of three, and then we will multiply the whole thing by 2.5. So this will give us the number minus 28.4765625. Now, whenever we convert this over to the fixed point number system in hex, we should get the answer E386. So that's E386. So we will load up this calling function here. We will run it and see whether we get that result. So I have gone ahead and loaded the program into the machine. So let's run it now. Now it'll take about a minute or so for it to run through the routine. And there's nothing much for us to see here at this level. So what we can do in the meantime is just drop in and we can see the actual machine working. Now, I always thought that the best looking section was in within the control section. So you can see all of the sets enables here flickering away here. So the dark green is a zero and the light green is a one. And if we head in here, you can see all those values being generated here. So let's head back up to the top level and it should be just about done by now. So we should see the answer if we get it correct, uh, E386 appearing in register R0 initially, and then it will be passed on to the memory location. And you see it there just appeared for a brief second. So that's the end of the code. Let's stop this and we will jump into the correct memory location. 
So this is the memory location here. So the value is E386 and it does work. So that's a nice powerful little subroutine that we can use and we will use it next whenever we generate the sine function and the cosine function using the Taylor series. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.